Will the Google Classroom replace the traditional Blackboard or not? And with that comes the whispered anxiety in our staff rooms. Will Google replace the teacher or not? Ladies and gentlemen, let me try to define both these statements in the context of the Indian school education as it is today. K to 12 millennials sit in our classrooms. India ranks 57th in the 2018 Global Innovation Index. Professor Shugato Mitro, in his work, Hole in the Wall, has exhibited the astonishing efficiency with which self-learning can happen with the help of World Wide Web and the 35-minute period, the interaction window that we call period in our classroom is no longer dominated by a single voice droning on and on and on for 35 minutes. This is a big change. And this big change is called introduction of technology in classroom education. Now, let me try to construct a narrative of this change and examine it in terms of what it means in terms of classroom practices. In 2000, January, Intel launched its Teach to the Future program in many countries, and among it was India. This was the first palpable big initiative to train the trainers in terms of usage of technology. And later on, organizations like Aziz Premji Foundation, then um, uh, Khan Academy, they also joined force. Now what began as an introduction to the tools of Microsoft Office soon exploded into the exploration and usage of online collaboration, web, uh, podcasts, webinars, online collaborative tools, the entire Google menu, and in fact, I can stand here perhaps for a year and enumerate to you all of those that have happened, and many of you in this audience are well familiar with these changes. Now, of course, this created a turmoil. Of course, it created a turmoil, and I feel that the two best outcomes of this turmoil were A, from the teacher's perspective, it removed the burden of being the single source of information. And from the B, from the student's perspective, it freed the student from the forced submission to the single style of learning. The evolution of a teacher as a facilitator, it is enormously interesting. And let me share a few personal observations with you. Let's look at primary school. Now, some of us in this auditorium are products of the English medium schooling system. Now, if we delve into our memory pool, I'm sure we can recall chanting, London Bridge is falling down, ring a ring a roses, pocket full of posies. Ladies and gentlemen, a three-year-old doesn't have a global perspective. In order to access what a particular, the meaning of a particular bridge in a particular city called London crumbling down, or what exactly was a pocket full of posies, it's quite a difficult task. But chanting we did, chanting we did with complete earnestness, and all our teachers made sure that we could reproduce all the words perfectly. Now, nowadays, when I prowl around the, along the corridors, because that's my job to do, 
and I peep into the nursery classrooms, I can hear and see the same London Bridge once more falling down on a YouTube video. And there is a difference. Instead of the teacher standing in front of the classroom, reading or reciting those lines, I see her moving around the classroom. Moving around the classroom, urging the shyest taught to participate. Moving around, helping the youngest in the class to use her motor skills so that she can synchronize movements, so that she can participate in rhythm building activities. Therefore, the sensory triggers which are brought in by visual and auditory impulses and which embed an experience in, in, in short-term memory and then take it to long-term memory, that job is being done by YouTube. And the teacher is doing, my monastery colleague is doing what she is trained to do best, provide the best pastoral attention that is required to make sure that every student is in involved and alert engagement. She is not a source of nursery rhymes anymore. She is a facilitator. Let me tell you a story about junior and middle school. Now, our Asian brains are loaded world over for agility in math, but math phobia is a reality of our school, Indian school situation, and I see many of the products of the Indian school system in the auditorium today. And I'm sure you will, some of you will agree with me. Now the problem is, the reason for this math phobia is that many of us teach math mechanically, not conceptually. We do not play with math. We do not, we do not contextualize math in terms of real life usage. We do not encourage, enable students to access the multiple learning pathways that will, that will give them the strength or the ability or the skill to recognize the, the, pattern, the ma pattern mapping or logical sequencing, which are the fundamental concepts of this subject. And this is where technology wins the game. In our school, we are currently using a dynamic platform called MindSpark. It's by Educational Initiative. Now, it's, a, it's an adaptive platform. Students are allowed to explore multiple topics, which is opened up by the teacher in her, her tab. This is, a, this is done through tabs. And the student is solving at his or her own pace and ability. There is digital hand-holding, too, in terms of remedial topics. And then there is a test given once more. Sometimes a little one will come to me and say, ma'am, I am the sparky champ of the week. So across schools which use these tabs, there is a healthy tidbit of competency, competition also going on. But what is significant here is in a classroom holding 40 students, it is usual for one topic to be explored. But here, through her monitoring tab, the teacher opens up three or four topics. And the students are solving according to their own pace, their own skill. And the teacher is monitoring that. In a room full of 40 heads bending over a notebook, it's impossible for a teacher to detect who is keeping pace or who is just sitting there, perhaps doodling. But through the tab that the teacher holds, she knows who is spending an inordinate number of time on a particular problem. 
is having an issue and therefore will intervene as is required. This is vertical and horizontal differentiation. Talking about high school and what happens there. I, as a student of literature, in my college days and in my, in, in my master's class, no, we, were, we used to study largely white, dead, male authors. But sometimes we also studied the living ones. Now, gathering any kind of any reference material for living authors was a nightmare. We trudged the footpaths of College Street. We plundered the lit section of British Council Library, American Library, but it was very difficult. British Library in our days used to host, used to invite some of these authors. And the opportunity to experience an author, physically experience an author, reading out, sharing thoughts, these were rock concert moments for us. I remember that a few years back, I was sharing this nostalgia with my IB students. And they were listening to me. I got a feeling that there was something a bit off in the sense that the body language had this kind of a balloon, puzzled sympathy. You poor old thing kind of an attention. And then I realized that for these netizens, accessing an author, experiencing the thoughts of an author is easy, so very easy. The online fan clubs, authors when own websites, podcasts, Twitter, blogs, they can reach out at any point of time. So research for them becomes immediate. It is personal. It is engaging. I use a blog to teach. And I use it like a digital um, brainstorming platform. In the senior classes, there are always people who would be dominating the discussion, who, who know everything about everything. And there will also be ones who will be sitting there with shining eyes, utterly mute, till you prod them with a question. Now what I do is that I usually place an open-ended research-based question and I also give a time, a timeline. So all eyes on the screen, all fingers on the keyboard, web links, multiple of web links are getting opened. Silly to sophisticated queries are being asked, being answered. Then the doubts which are, which are delved into, they are expanded explored, perspectives are recorded, they are borrowed, they are expanded, and I become one of the experts in that 20-odd expert gathering. I do not have the responsibility of being the sole source of information. I do not distribute perspectives. I do not judge the correctness of opinions. All I am doing is facilitate independent research. All I am doing is nudge thinking along analytical corridors. And also, I do another thing. I do teach them time management. Now talking about time, the clock is also moving. The clock hand is also moving here. So let me gather together the few thoughts that I've shared with you and affirm these truths. The first truth being, technology is a tool 
in the hand of an educator. It's means to an end and not an end by itself. Technology is a part of our everyday life, whether it is urban or otherwise. We teach real children of, re of the real world. Therefore, ergo, all teachers need to be technologically competent. Classrooms are not display centers of the latest app or the gizmo or dazzling websites. Human beings inhabit classrooms. These are the centers where social skills, emotional equities, academic prowess, they are nurtured. Human beings are inhabiting the classrooms, I repeat. Teachers and their students inhabit our classrooms. I would like to share two anecdotes with you, two anecdotes that I have borrowed from a study conducted by British Council, and this is under their Center Square Foundation. Stories of two government teachers. Meet Mr. Disale, government teacher from, the, from Maharashtra. Now, he has embedded, read for yourself, he has embedded QR codes in textbooks, the motive being to take the learning beyond a textbook, beyond the classroom. He also checks absenteeism through engagement. If students are interested, they will come to school. They, hung, they hunger for more. Similar work is done by Mohammed Fazil. He teaches grade four to eight, again in a government school. And look at the tools that he is using to create augmented reality. He takes them on virtual, virtual field trips. He plays games with them. With Microsoft, Microsoft Office tools, he uses the Google menu to create these experiences. Ordinary men and women, ladies and gentlemen. Ordinary men and women who can do extraordinary things if they are ignited by the spark for change. They are the, our real-time heroes. They are the heroes who give us hope that the future of school education in India is quite, quite secure. Thank you very much. <laughs>